Okay, friends, let's talk about Lucian Wintrich. Win Wintrich? Lucian Wintrich? Some people are cruel. Let's talk about Lucian Wintrich, criminal law, and the breach of peace. That was very dramatic. Um, okay, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, in full disclosure, I do not speak for uh, Gateway Pundit. Uh, I don't care about Gateway Pundit, or really, I don't care about many media organizations at all. I don't know Lucian Wintrich. Wintrich? Never heard of him. Don't care about him. Um, don't have any interest in his political positions. They're irrelevant. Uh, not to me. Or they're irrelevant to me, not to other people, obviously, as we'll get to. But just to say, I don't, I don't know these people. I have no vested interest in them. Uh, my bias towards them comes strictly as uh, the cases I work as a defense attorney. So that's where I'm coming from with this. Um, this is a criminal action. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about how uh, criminal charges work and, and what, uh, what's going on here. So if you don't know, Lucian Wintrich is apparently a right-wing blogger. Uh, he's a correspondent for the Gateway Pundit. Specifically, he's the White House correspondent, so he has press credentials, gets to go to White House briefings. Um, and he is also the Washington bureau chief of the Trump boosting blog. Oh, that's Gateway Pundit that they're talking about. <clears throat> Good job, CNN. Uh, he went to University of Connecticut to a speech, to deliver a speech um, titled It's Okay to Be White, which is very not okay. Uh, as we all know, being white is a problem, and it's good that you remember that. But uh, this guy decided it was necessary to remind people that it is okay to be white or lie to them, as it were. I don't I don't know. what is. Is it not okay? Uh, and a bunch of people got really mad at him. And what happened next is the interesting part. So um, there are videos on this, I being completely inept. Um, have no idea how to put that video into my video yet. So I will at some point know this. But for now, you'll have to deal with my incompetence. Um, so I'm not going to have it. Go look up any video. Just figure out how to spell Lucian Wintrich. Wintrich. If I could say his name right, it would help. Uh, figure out how to say his, uh, spell his name. Type it into YouTube and you, you get all the videos of, of this altercation. So he's up speaking at the podium and a uh, female walks up and decides to take a stack of papers. Presumably these papers are his speech notes or his written speech or something like that. She just walks up, snags them, turns around and walks away. Uh, Lucian takes um, issue, <laughs> takes issue with this and he walks up, um, grabs her, uh, sort of restrains her and, and looks to grab the papers and then the sort of a, a mini brawl breaks out. Lucian is arrested. Uh, I think the woman might have been arrested also, but I'm, I'm not really interested in, in her uh, issue here. The news is that Lucian Wintrich, pro-Trump, right-wing, alt-right, racist blogger, uh, and, and correspondent for Gateway Pundit has been arrested and he has been charged under Connecticut law with breach of the peace. Now, I tried to find the documents. They don't seem to be up yet, the charging documents, so I can't be certain. However, I am relatively certain that what they've charged him with is, let's see here, breach of the peace under section, uh, this is the um, Connecticut General Statutes, uh, 53A-181. Um, this is breach of the peace in the second degree, which is a class B misdemeanor. Uh, in my state, this would be called disorderly conduct. Oh, and Lucian, if this makes it to you, buddy, I'm not giving you legal advice. Contact an attorney in Connecticut. I can't help you. Um, so breach of the peace in the second degree, class B misdemeanor. There is a first degree charge. I looked at it pretty sure that's not what they're charging him with because it has nothing to do with the events of his case. But the second degree charge uh, goes as follows. So section A, a person is guilty of breach of the peace in the second degree when, with intent to cause inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, 
or recklessly creating a risk thereof, such person engages in fighting or in violent, tumultuous, or threatening behavior in a public place, or assaults or strikes another, or threatens to commit any crime against another person or such other person's property, or publicly exhibits, distributes, posts up, or advertises any offensive, indecent, or abusive matter concerning any person, or in a public place uses abusive or obscene language, or makes an obscene gesture, getting dangerous on First Amendment principles, or creates a public and hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act which such person is not licensed or privileged to do. For purposes of this section, public place means any area that is used or held out for use by the public, whether owned or operated by private, public or private interests. Section B is really simple. Breach of the peace in the second degree is a class B misdemeanor. Okay, so this is an intent crime. You have to intend to cause the elements. Uh, the elements, you know, are, are this intent to annoy, um, inconvenience, or create alarm uh, in someone. And, and then there's a recklessness standard, which goes hand in hand with a lot of an intent where you say, well, I didn't mean to, but your actions are so uh, ridiculous or reckless, as it were, that um, they decide that you must have intended it by how little care you took in, in taking it. This is the yelling fire in a crowded theater. Like, if you're, and, and this is a long time exception to the First Amendment, I'm not saying it's justified, but it's there, that you can't be, um, we can't protect someone from running into a very crowded theater, yelling fire, and causing people to, uh, resultingly causing people to like run out, presumably trample and, and, and injure people and vacating the theater, interfering with business and all sorts of stuff like that. So the idea is that while the person who runs in and yells fire may have intended for everybody to laugh and get a chuckle out of it, the fact that it incites panic um, should have been an expectation of any normal person. Like if people are terrified of fire in a small space. They will, they will move towards the exit as fast as possible. Um, so this is a foreseeable event. So if you recklessly act in this way, um, you're foreseeing it. So they're carrying over this, this recklessness standard into the, um, into this crime of breach of peace in the second degree. So they, you need to in repeating myself here, you got to intend to either cause inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or act in such a reckless way that, uh, a normal person would realize that your actions would, um, create a risk of an inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm. So that's the intent portion. So did he do that? Um, if we go back to the elements of the crime here, or not the elements, but uh, I guess the scenarios they have, engaging in fighting or in violent, tumultuous, or threatening behavior in a public place. Uh, they, If you remember, they lay out public place. This is any area that is used or held out for use by the public, whether owned or operated by public or private interests. So University of Connecticut speaking engagement is clearly a public place. Yes, it's on um, public slash private land because uh, U UConn is a state school, um, but typically this would be considered private land. UConn would have authority over it. However, it's a speech. It's a public event. People can either come for free or buy tickets, presumably, uh, and, and no one is turned away. Like, you don't have an exclusive club, or even if you do, the exclusive club would be students, which is a sufficiently broad group, to label this a public place for the sake of a crime. Uh, so that's not an issue. And... Again, not seeing the charging documents, so I'm not sure which specific subsection they're going with. But either engages in fighting or in violent, tumultuous, or threatening behavior. Uh, he does grab her. He restrains her. I don't know. It's hard to tell from the video if any punches are thrown. But maybe he throws a punch or two. Uh, and assaults or strikes another would be, you know, these two would run hand in hand to this. And this easily falls into the elements of breach of peace in the second degree. But that's not where legal analysis stops, and, and this is where, um, you know, attorneys come in and, and start saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. The very nature of doing 
these elements isn't the entire question. And so in Lucian's case, we have to look to see if he has a defense. He's on video doing this, so we're pretty sure that it's him grabbing, uh, restraining, possibly striking this woman. Like, we're, we're sure that it's him with about as much certainty as possible. There are, there are multiple videos of the incident. Uh, it, it's all over. He's a public person, sort of. Uh, but anyway, people know who he is. So um, there's not really a question of, of did these facts occur. The question becomes whether these facts are, are justifiable. Um, so the, the issue we have to look at in this case, it involves the theft, right? This, that's, that's what's going on here. This is a theft of his property if these documents belong to him and are in his possession. So, uh, basically he's standing at a podium delivering a speech, presumably the documents taken, um, and, and. I could be wrong. These documents could be the property of the school or another speaker. I don't know that for certain. But the presumption, a safe presumption, that a speaker at a podium, uh, the papers on there are probably his documents. And even if they aren't, uh, the person grabbing them might have assumed that they were. But the safe presumption is that these are his documents. So this lady walks up. Uh, grabs the documents off the podium, doesn't appear to say anything or do anything other than turn around and walk away. That's a theft, <laughs> right? Uh, you can't just take things. Um, and, and what I want to go to here is, uh, so I, I looked for an affirmative defense uh, for self-defense um, or defense of property for breach of the peace. And there isn't a specific statutory uh, method of this defense. However, there is case law on this, very little, uh, from Connecticut. So um, this is State versus Burnett, uh, 2005, and this is from the Connecticut Appeals Court. And uh, a guy, uh, long story short, in this case, a, a guy thought some people were trespassing on his wife's property. He engaged them in some sort of melee combat and uh, was charged with assault. He stated that this charge was inappropriate because he was defending property against trespassers and uh, the court disagreed with him. However, they do lay out uh, some useful information here and it's very short. So uh, the court says that whether a claim of self-defense applies to a charge of breach of the peace in the second degree and threatening in the second degree, which was another related crime that he had, is a question of law. So um, it's not a statutory issue. It's a question of, of law. We look to common law uh, examples. Was, uh, do the facts of this particular instance lead to a justifiable use of force? Now, um, how we do that is, you know, one way to do that is to look through established case law. I'm not a Connecticut lawyer, uh, and, and I don't really want to do all that research and we don't really need to um, because I've got a I've got a simple breakdown on the use of force this is from what's called the model penal code so this is uh, a group of attorneys have gotten together and um, they've come up with the model penal code which is this is a reference book for how criminal law basically works in most places the model penal code is not necessarily adopted by each state um, in, pol in whole or in part. Uh, so you can't use the model penal code in, in court as a primary authority. It's a secondary authority to back up your points. But that's, that's irrelevant here. It's useful for the, for the purposes of YouTube. So what even is in YouTube? Uh, the use of force for protection of property. This is section 3.06 of the model penal code. And um, Subsection 1, use of force justifiable for protection of property. Subject to the provisions of this section, section 309, which is not really important here, the use of force upon or toward the person of another is justifiable when the actor believes that such force is immediately necessary, A, to prevent or terminate an unlawful entry, that doesn't apply, or other trespass upon land, that doesn't apply, or a trespass against or the unlawful carrying away of tangible, movable property. 
provided that such land or movable property is or is believed by the actor to be in his possession or in the possession of another person for whom's uh, for whose protection he acts. This falls right in the model penal code description. This is a summary of how common law has worked out. Um, Lucian has his papers and effects on the podium. This lady walks up and takes them. He has a justification in using force to recover his stolen property. Even if you or I might think, uh, the value of those pages of paper is almost nothing. He could easily go back and print off another speech. Um, it doesn't matter because he might have different interests in that speech. It may have personal handwritten notes on it. It may, um, it may be something that he doesn't want to publish in writing that simply, uh, you know, the speech that he gives at UConn will be sort of a unique thing and having his notes published would be some sort of violation um, of his of his rights in in the work that he's created because if he doesn't say the exact words on the page and there's something he's created for himself and is not desiring to make public you know he might not want that out there so he has an interest uh, regardless of how we look at um, the value of his property and I'm not saying his property is not valuable I'm just uh, eliminating in advance and uh, the the opposition that look it's just a stack of paper he can go back to his printer and print like 20 more I'm sure Yukon would print off something for him if he brought him a little thumb drive it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what our perceived value of the property is he has determined that this is property that is under his protection possession um, and that uh, he has an interest in protecting it so he goes and he acts justifiable use of force under the model penal code so in Connecticut, again, uh, self-defense, um, defense of property, these are questions of law. Uh, so what looks like is going to happen here is that Lucian will, will be charged with this misdemeanor, and he'll have one of two options. He can pay probably a tiny fine in Connecticut, uh, a couple hundred bucks, and walk away with um, several months, maybe a year of probation. Um, but it is a misdemeanor, so he probably faces technically up to 90 days in jail based on his uh, other other criminal activities in Connecticut or the mood of the judge, as it were. Um, the other option here is that he fights. He fights them. He, he asserts, no, I was justified in going after this person to retrieve my property. Uh, the model penal code doesn't say it, but there's this there's this idea when you're using force to protect property. And that's that. A reasonable amount of non-deadly force is justified so long as you're in what's called uh, hot pursuit, basically. Um, from the moment of, of the theft occurring, you're following a person and attempting to get your property back. That's fine. Does not allow you... Uh, a justification for use of force at at some like extended temporal uh, event. So let's say someone steals uh, this guy's papers, then he sees that guy on Thursday with the papers. He can't go up and start mugging someone and trying to take the papers away. The window of the use of force's reasonableness to reco recover his property has diminished. And there's no hard line on this. The courts would, would determine it. It's a reasonableness standard, so it's kind of flexible. But basically, um, you know, they would suggest that after a certain amount of time has passed, and it may even be minutes, it may be hours, it all depends on the facts of the case. Like if, if his pursuing this person is starting to cause risk to other people around him, like say she hops in a car and drives away, and he hops in a car and, and chases her, and then their speed starts getting excessive and they're driving through residential neighborhoods, you know, the reasonableness of the force that he might use or even the pursuit um, starts to wane as we start figuring in other factors. That's not an issue in this case. He walks like 12 feet, grabs this chick, and, and tries to get his property back. Um, so the media is, the media is really relishing on this story and, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the motivation for charging this guy with breach of peace is. It looks to me like this is a high profile person. They can slap a breach of peace charge or maybe, you know, it, it might be less nefarious than that. It might simply be that 
officers um, oftentimes will charge out actions because they know a lot of people are going to plea to them and pay a fine. They have no intention of the person going to jail. They want to they control the scenario. They make an arrest. And they figure, you know what? Uh, we arrested you. We're going to go ahead and charge you with something. They have, I mean, and, and in fairness to law enforcement, they have evidence that he's committed a breach of peace. What he has is a defense that doesn't invalidate the evidence that the that that the state has against him. It just merely provides him an an obvious legal avenue to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, you have this evidence. Yes, it was me. I did this thing, but I could. I could. There are rules that allow me to do it in this specific circumstance. Here are the facts, and here's how we tie them to those rules. That's how you do these things. That's how that's how defense claims are made. And I think, um, you know, if he if he's got a competent attorney, he has a chance to get this thing this charge dismissed, um, or or you know, if they want to negotiate. Uh, he's part of a major media organization, and a media organization that's. In, in some ways, we, some people would consider an underdog or, or an in, not necessarily an independent journalist, but, but you know, this is not CNN, right? This is, uh, this is Gateway Pundit. There's a difference in their perceived credibility. I won't say one is more credible than the other. I don't care. I don't like either of them. I don't like anybody, if you haven't figured it out. But... Uh, you know they might have an interest in protecting the reputation of their of their correspondent they might have uh, he might have a personal interest in protecting his his reputation saying no 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 i was justified in doing this and if so he may forego a plea deal that would probably be you know really favorable to him probably a couple hundred dollar fine like i said and and uh, probationary period of a year of of don't assault anyone in in connecticut really easy thing to do especially if you're typically located out of um, Washington, D.C. He can just avoid Connecticut for, for the next several months to a year and, and avoid this. But he may want to spend the extra money on an attorney to go ahead and actually fight this. And I think, um, you know, you got two options when you're doing a criminal case. You've got uh, your, your, you can bring your case before a judge. You can bring your case before a jury. I think he's got grounds here to, to for a motion to dismiss before a judge. Um, and, and for a judge to determine this entirely on its legal basis, saying, yeah, these are the elements of the crime, here they are, that doesn't matter because I have justification in doing this. There's case law to support it. We have the model penal code. We have lots of common law that says that uh, you can stop someone who's stealing your stuff as long as you can get to them pretty quickly and without causing risk to others. Like, there's no reason. Like, if, if someone steals a purse and you can chase after them and grab the purse from them, you're, you're not guilty of assaulting that person. They committed a wrong to you first. So I think uh, Lucius here, Lucian, Lu, what, what's his name? Lucian. Lucian, not Lucius, sorry. Lucian Wintrick is... Uh, is probably going to get out of this one just fine. I mean, he's going to he's going to be fine either way. But I think he actually has a valid defense um, for this. He's justified in the force that he used. Uh, reviewing the videos, it doesn't appear to be excessive in any way. He's not like throwing punches or uppercuts. He doesn't pull a weapon on this person. Um, yeah, it looks like a, a justifiable use of of, of of force in defense of property that uh, he believes to be in his possession. So um, that's it. Uh, shorter video today, and I know my short videos are like almost a freaking half hour because uh, I, well, that's just who I am. Sorry. Um, hope you guys found it interesting. Uh, this is this is a news topic, so I I found it interesting, um, and just wanted to kind of let you know how legal defenses work, uh, especially when there's overwhelming evidence that you you did the element uh, of the crime. Um, then you you know it's your attorney's job to raise that defense of whoa this is self defense uh, I have a right to protect my own property interests this person came up took my stuff I can go and physically take it from her even if I have to use force to do so I'm justified in doing that and uh, to say otherwise is ridiculous because that would that would put the um, you know that would require us to just let people have our stuff when they want to take it and we couldn't do anything about it so. Um, 
Lucian is is likely justified. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever find out if he fights the charge or just pays the the misdemeanor fine and and accepts like a, a non jail sentence. Uh, it's hard to say, but um, yeah, it's in the news. I saw it. It made me annoyed. Uh, and again, I don't care about Lucian Wintrick. I've never heard of him. He looks kind of kind of douchey. Uh, I don't. His positions. Uh, I'm, I'm neutral on his positions. I agree it's it's okay to be white. I don't know if I agree that you need to go say it in public. I don't care. Like, I don't care about, about this at all. I don't care about him in any particular way. But as as a defense attorney, um, I see the potential for for some overreach from uh, the police in this instance and, and the, the district attorney or county attorney, whoever it is, who's actually charged him with a crime. I think that's... They they're justified in doing so. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a malicious prosecution, but it's a pointless prosecution because uh, you should beat these charges no problem. Um, the video shows that he has a valid self defense claim. Uh, this shouldn't be charged, but when it is charged, you know you get an attorney. They go in and attack this stuff. I'm guessing he's charged because he's higher profile than than um, you know some some drunk on the street. More nefariously, I'm guessing he's charged because of his political position. I don't have any evidence of that. It's just a feel for it. Like it, it doesn't make sense to charge this guy for what he, what he did, because he's justified in doing so. If someone takes your stuff, generally speaking, you can follow them for a brief period of time and use a minimal amount of force, whatever is reasonable for you to procure your property. Uh, you cannot use deadly force in most states to defend uh, movable property. So if he would have pulled a gun on this lady and shot her, that's probably not okay. But you know, going up and just grabbing her, restraining her, even punching or, or striking her in a manner that, um, you know, unless this is a, a trained a trained fighter of some sort where where he's particularly dangerous, which if you look at this guy, it, he doesn't look particularly dangerous at all. Um, you know, just simply grabbing and restraining someone, even hitting them, trying to get your property back is okay. That's not legal advice. Uh, I, I would always advise people to, uh, to resolve conflict in the most peaceful way possible. Um, that's not always practical. Uh, so when that happens, you know, you contact an attorney in whatever state uh, you're charged with, and and they should have a field day with this. Uh, they should get to make some some grandiose speech about, uh, you know, improper prosecution stuff. Nothing will probably come of that, but they can at least make a point about it. And that's fun for us to do, right, to get up and, and uh, be very indignant, have some righteous indignation on behalf of our clients. Because... Um, as a defense attorney, the first thing you find out is people get charged with nonsense at an alarming rate. And the people who do are are usually disadvantaged. They don't have the means to fight it. It's really frustrating. That doesn't say anything about the demographics of the people involved. It happens across all races um, and, and both genders where um, district attorneys and police, they charge up. Uh, or they charge people hoping for a plea agreement. You'd be shocked at how little things go to trial. But they, they charge up hoping for some sort of plea agreement. And, and oftentimes they'll charge for crimes that aren't really crimes. Because if a person pleads guilty to the elements, like, and they can make any reasonable amount. Like in this, in this instance, technically, even though Lucian has a valid defense, if he genuinely determined himself to be guilty of this behavior... He could go into the court and say, say, you know, your honor, I want to plead guilty. Here's what happened that day. Uh, there was a woman in the audience. I got upset with her. I followed her and and I caught, you know, I, I engaged in a fight or assaultive behavior with her and I struck her and, and I realized that that was, that's a crime uh, of breach of the peace and uh, I, I apologize, but I am pleading guilty. He could do that. He could leave out his justification or defense if he doesn't believe it's valid. I'm guessing he believes he's justified in following this woman, grabbing her stuff. And he is. He is. Make no mistake. This guy is justified. And if he goes, uh, makes a not guilty plea, probably a motion to dismiss um, gets rid of this thing. But I, I'm, I'm rambling. I tried to end this video like four minutes ago and, and I failed. I apologize for failure. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope this was interesting to you. If you have any questions about like higher profile criminal cases as they pop up, 
uh, drop on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash lossplaining, and drop me, uh, just drop a message on there. I don't think you have to pay to drop a message. Um, I would love it if you did. Please pay me. But uh, just come on there, drop a message if you have a question, and, you know, um, if if it's something interesting and uh, and I and, and I'm qualified to comment on it, I'll gladly do so. So I uh, hope you guys have a good night. Uh, thanks for watching.